Hey all, and welcome back for another Hellfire Comms Patreon Quick Look. Today we are taking a look at the rather marvellous Octopath Traveler for the Nintendo Switch. This was commissioned by Deimos, and we're pretty much going to play through the prologue in one of because that's what Tana has suggested to me. So, uh, I guess we'll check out Cyrus first and foremost. Oh, you want to go with Cyrus first? Are you sure about that? Are you sure you want to go with Cyrus first? I would, uh, maybe... I, can I give you some recommendations for ones to start with? Okay, go for it. Okay, have you played the demo for this? I have not, mate. Do you want to explain what the concept of Octopath Traveler is? Okay, so you have eight travelers who all go on uh, journeys of their own who just meet up, and the, even though they kind of stay as individual people, they work together to solve their problems. It's kind of a different take on an RPG party where they're not super trying to be... Um, like a big friend of, of party of people who want to be friends to save the world instead they kind of just go along with each other so i would recommend for you either primrose the dancer because her story is amazing but it was in the demo so some people might have already seen it but the one i went with is tressa the merchant and hers is just it's it's a really lovely opening of the game if you ask me Alright, uh, let's see. Your name is Tressa and you're a merchant. You stock the shelves at your parents' shop in your sleepy seaside hometown. Yet you often find yourself gazing out at the sea, longing for something more. What lies beyond the horizon? You thought you'd never know the answer. Then, one day, an unfamiliar vessel weighs anchor at the docks, changing your life forever. Let's do this. So the other path has you be a prostitute. Yay! So you, you decided to pick capitalism. <laughs> Well, I'm doing these quick looks for money, what do you expect? <laughs> so, uh, the one thing about the first character you pick, and I mean, obviously this, it, maybe if we go back to this, we could change it up, but the first character you pick, you are locked in with f until you complete their story. Okay. Uh, otherwise, you pretty much freely pick who's in your party, but they, they become you, essentially. Okay. I'm not going to be stuck with, like, Tingle's Rosy Code of Reaper Land controls, am I, given that I'm playing a merchant? No. And in fact, when I first picked Tressa as the, as my main character because I thought to myself, she's adorable, I love her, capitalism ho, I was surprised to see, no, she's actually super competent in combat, and her co her uh, money-using skills in combat are really good, actually. Well, the shop ain't gonna stock itself. Uh, I love full English voice acting, it's great. Well, it's not s super full, it's mostly the, uh, the main story cutscenes have it, but, uh, Tressa here is played by Frida Wolf, who has an awesome name, and is mostly known for being, um, not, oh, she is, uh, Anna and Penny from WarioWare. Okay. She is, uh, oh, she was Sarah Ryder from Mass Effect Andromeda, we'll skip that one. Yeah. Um, she was the female narrator for Street Fighter V, and uh, she's uh, in Bloodstained, but uh, for the most part, not not a huge many rules. Uh, this game has a smaller voice cast, but it let us get, for example, uh, Chris Neosi Kerbifer in, yeah, the voice yeah. of Ike from Fire Emblem, Greg Chun, giving him some stuff, and uh, but then you still got, like, Patrick Seitz, who's the best. Oh, she's adorable. See, she's a big fan of Break the Targets, by the way. I just stuck it up on the wall there. If it Break the Targets, is ever going to come back to Smash for, like, Race to the Finish? I, I think there's going to be a thing where it's like, we've added a new sub-game in, in, like, a in an update trailer or something. Everything we left out! Yikes. Spicy, Tom. Spicy. Right, when does the actual gameplay start? Cause I gotta say, graphically, this had me from minute one when it was shown at the Nintendo Direct. But, uh... Is it just the same old, like, turn-based stuff, or is there a wrinkle to it? There is a wrinkle, um, that it tries to play off as this brand new thing called the brake system, but it's actually, they just, they literally just took the Bravely Default, uh, combat system of Braves and Defaults and turned it into a slightly different, uh, like, they just barely modified it, because, of course, this is done by the Bravely Default team. We are the best parents in the world. Wish she's gonna make us rich. So when they were setting out to make this, they said that they wanted to make what was essentially going to be a sequel to Final Fantasy VI, at least gameplay-wise. I can see that, yeah. 
Okay. Radar is very important. You gotta go speak with a fisherman. So, uh, one thing that is weird, not mm -hmm. every NPC wants to talk to you. Um, mm. and I think it's just because, well, I guess that's kind of more realistic. <laughs> oh, there's a chest down there, but you can barely see it because of the blur. Mm. You gotta look out a bit more, for sure. Um, so you can't use every type of weapon. Uh, certain characters can only use certain ones, so... Uh, like, you can't use the rod, but you can use a bow and spear as Tressa. That's her two weapons. What do you recommend, mate? Well, you actually use both of them at the same time in combat, so... Honestly, probably at this point, uh, the Iron Spear will help balance things out, yeah. Okay. I actually don't know what I have on me, so I'm just gonna go ahead and equip it. There we go. Well, it shows you at the side that that's better than what you had on there. Okay. Um, so, but yeah, you have two weapons on in combat at all times, uh, because this game kind of uses, um, weapons as elements. That you can, uh, you know, certain enemies will be weak to a certain type of weapon, so you have two for each character to make it be like, well, this character can use this one and this one. Everything just looks like a pop-up book a little bit. Well, take a guess what this game came with in the special edition. The answer is a pop-up book. A pop-up book, okay, well, you said it before I could finish my little jovial exclamation. <laughs> Don't sound so surprised. Why do you sound so surprised, Tanner? Because we all gotta have fish. So it just kind of goes at its own pace and whatnot. I'm reminded a little bit of, um... What was that one level 5 RPG for the 3DS where you have your own role and whatnot? Uh, Fantasy Life? That's the one. I got bored of that about, like, 10 hours in. Yeah, so did level 5. Now it's a more Wow, RPG. Jesus Christ. It's kind of a, a kind of a dead series now, which is a bit of a shame. I didn't mean to skip that, but apparently I got to the wine. <laughs> you got it. No, you need to get the wine now. So here's a new gameplay gimmick. Basically, every character has a thing called a, uh, a path action, which when you walk up to certain things or people, uh, you can press the Y button and you'll be able to do certain things. So Tressa can be, well, they have to be people with a, a talking bubble above them. Otherwise, they're just basically objects in the environment. Tressa can go up and say, Hey, I see that um, large sword in your pocket. You mind giving it to me and for, for money? And they can be like, Oh, sure, and sell it to you. Um, you also later on get a thief who can see that same thing and be like, I'm just going to steal it from you instead. So there's good path actions and bad ones. Good ones like buying can never fail. Should I purchase the slippery nut? I think you should. <laughs> That's one slippery note right there. Uh, the more you end up buying, the more you, uh, the more better you will get bargains. Okay. So yeah, there's the good path action for acquiring items is buying, the bad one is stealing. You'll later on also have stuff like, yeah, if you talk to certain people, you'll be able to beat them up. Okay, cool. I'm just going to go with the good route right now. I don't want to make a name for myself in town, you know? So thankfully there is no actual morality system in this because those are kind of, they, they were a big thing for a while, but Another instead day. it's just, Another uh, deal. good actions are always good, but so have you good, work harder? Well, bad so actions good. can fail, but are instant successes. I've always found to myself being a merchant in like an MMO or something, like back when Star Wars MMOs were big, and I guess they still are, but back then, I mean, I was like, Oh, I could, like, go about and sell stuff to Jedis and whatnot. Become the NPC, just like Fallout 76, where people have literally decided to be, my job for Bethesda is to now be NPCs in the game for people, because there are none. Wow. Yeah, right? It's pretty sad. I really like that war. It contrasts well with the pixel art. I actually, uh, so you can actually change some of the settings around there's one that tones down some of the visual effects and i actually end up using that mostly because um some of the blur that they use on stuff i'm like i'd actually like to see stuff around me so i, I ended up actually <laughs> turning it off because i was just like just a little bit a little bit less hmm. i guess since i'm immersed in this why don't you ask me how i feel about rpgs 
Yeah. How do you feel about RPGs? I like RPGs, thanks. Good. Um, <laughs> Good talk, what, Tom. What is the most immersive RPG you've played? The one that really puts you into that world? Xenoblade Chronicles, no doubt. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. I wanted to live in Colony 9, but without the concept or prospect of, uh, you know, the world I live on coming alive and killing me. That would suck, man. Yeah. For the most part, uh, these people live pretty... Like, there is not huge JRPG world-ending stuff, at least as far as I'm aware, because um, I haven't fully beat the game. But it's mostly just, like, characters' individual stories and them oh, dealing the with the um, how... Like, how would you deal with, you know, someone who killed your father? And, you know, the whole story is dealing with, well, how do I find out who What's killed my father? Or how do I, how do I bring them to justice? You realize you're just discussing or describing the plot of Kill the Kill, right? I, I gotta find out who killed my dad. Yep. Tressa is secretly Ryuku in disguise. Oh man, get that fan art! By of course I mean Ryoko. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I can't speak tonight, I have a cold. So, uh, what's interesting is some characters in this game, uh, they give around different accents and ways of speaking. Um, there's one character who speaks entirely in horrible, like, Shakespearean English. Oh, no. And so, if you pick her as your start, uh, there's people who are like, please don't tell me the whole game is like this. Because her tribe, they doth speaketh like so. Oh. And it's it's really bad because it's not even real Shakespearean English. People have like called it out, saying like this is like a kid trying to write like Shakespeare. So, it, so there's people who are like so happy to learn that oh thank God the whole game's not like this. But uh, that that's Hanit there. Apparently her tribe uh, speaketh Shakespearean. Oh, is evil afoot? Will I finally get to fight? Check it out. Yes, let the soul merchant go take a look. Here's Not the big guy with the ship and such. Defeat them with the power of capitalism? Oh yeah, I'll just throw money at them until they fall. You joke, but wait till you see what she can do in combat. Oh, uh, I guess I'll see. It's potentially better than throwing money. <laughs> it's throwing money and then something comes to pick it up. <laughs> Oh, these guys are so fun. Don't, I beg you. <laughs> really? Are you taking the mech? These guys are the most JRPG pirates ever. I love them <laughs> so much. <laughs> Their names are Mick and Mac. <laughs> We gotta conform to stereotypes, Mick. We got nothing else in this world. They are so hilariously stereotypical. It's so good. When I got this, I had the biggest smile on my face because I'm like, this is like so reassuring that we still have JRPG pirates to deal with in this world. As long as they exist, I can get through my nine to five. Like, you know what? I could I could go past the level one slime enemies. That I could leave behind in the past, but I need my JRPG pirates. Mm-hmm, yeah. <laughs> Alright, this is getting a bit ridiculous now. When do <laughs> I come in and clobber someone? No, we're just enjoying it. Arts cuts. <laughs> okay. I'm not used to this sort of pirate lingo. I'm used to Johnny Depp <laughs> pretending to be drunk. And Lord, is he ever pretending now that he's not part of the Pirates franchise? And <laughs> I was going to say, is he pretending anymore, or is he just being? Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> Keep forgetting that you can't hear the audio while we play these. I won't allow it. That's okay. I've, uh, As I said, like I've played through this one uh, quite a bit myself. I'm about... I'm about half-ish way through, and there is a really easy way of seeing how it kind of goes through, where every character essentially has like four... Or is it three? Three or four um, major events for their personal stories that you have to go through. So, like, I'm about, uh, I finished half of the 
chapter two stories for everyone. Okay. So it is, and it the way the world kind of works is because we're not going to really get into it, but essentially. It's a donut inside of a donut inside of a donut, and each donut, as you get further out, it gets more difficult. Okay. So as such, like, the first donut is your, um, your level, like, chapter one stories, so you can go all the way around and get them done. Now, the thing is, apparently when this game was being made, they thought, okay, people are going to choose four characters and go th with them through all their adventures, and that's what they're going to do. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's kind of balanced in that way, but nice. no, most people actually get all eight characters to start off with, and then, because of course you want to get as many party members as you can, so end up going that way. So the game is kind of balanced in a way that you can beat it with just the you four. Did. You can also just pretty much be Tressa and go through her entire story on her own okay. and do it that way. So it is very open to different ways of playing. It's one of those types of games that you, oh, Lily, Lily, Lily livered scalawag, like, Oof. come on. It's powerful. But it's one of those games where you could play, replay it and do it entirely differently, which is my favorite type of RPG because like uh, Final Fantasy V in particular, that game, every single playthrough can be completely different by just picking different jobs. Fare thee well. <laughs> it's been a bloody pleasure, in it? Stop them, maybe? Has no one in this town got a gun? Guns haven't been invented yet. There's no need to pretend. But you know what? Capitalism may bring it to this town. <laughs> Let's go get the Iron Man suit that we keep behind the desk. Oh man, if there's That's... one thing I'm gonna miss from Tumblr's sad, sad death, it's that one Tumblr that would just take random Disney movies and turn them into Iron Man. <laughs> yeah, it's not really dead, it's still pretty thriving. Uh, but I mean, like, well, I know me and most of uh, the other people went what, once they uh, once they have removed the coochie. There's no point. Oh, please, Tumblr, give us back the coochie. And they said no. That's why I'm here recording a quick look. <laughs> we got some caves we got to go through, so that'll be our first dungeon. So uh, one thing is a lot of the intro stories pretty much work the same way of introduce the character, introduce the first dungeon, and then you go through it and fight a boss. It's They all pretty much work the same uh, in terms of being you know, an, an early uh, JRPG thing. Okay. But later on, there's a bit of mixing oh, and nice. matching, a bit of a skill customizing that goes on. And look at that sprite-based seagull! Oh, it's beautiful. Sublime. I, I'm more impressed by the tree, honestly. Because it, it looks like a 3D Oh my model, god, yeah, wow. But it must be pixels. These are, no, uh, everything in this game is actually a 3D model. Huh. Um, the only thing is, the things that look like sprites are just, uh, like one block, uh, thick, if you will. But everything in this game is a, this is a 3D world full of 3D models. Because, like, even if you look at the ship, you can see they're like, that's clearly a 3D model. Yeah. I'm gonna fight them with fists full of money. <laughs> Sadly, we won't be able to, to, you know, go all out, go full ultra-capitalist, because uh, we don't have that much money right now, but there's some fun stuff with the money. And uh, every character also has a super passive skill that, like, kind of activates on its own. Tressa can gain money upon entering areas. If you, if you, like, walk out of the side of the screen there, it'll just say, like, Tressa found $500, and you're just <laughs> like, what? And I was confused. Well, it says she spots some money, and I'm like, okay, do I have to go find it? It's like, no, she just gets it. You just, when you're transitioning screens with, with Tressa, she just gets money. I'm willing to part with some of my wares if you think they'll prove, oh, yes, please, suit me up. So that catches your own, consider it yours for the right price, of course. We are we are a merchant, we gotta haggle. Yep. Deal. Haggling battle activate. Have you ever actually haggled for something in real life? No, because that's not how business fucking works. Okay, but when I went to Mexico I was told, no, shut up, you gotta haggle, and it was it was scary because I was like, I don't wanna be rude, but I kinda wanna buy this for half the price, and they're like, okay. <laughs> I'm like, oh so yeah, you see you can sometimes get a discount on it. It'll say, Hey, you haggled a discount. Nice. Maybe I should just buy all the stuff from this guy. 
Yeah, you can. There's nothing stopping you. I oh, mean, God. aside from the the amount of money, um, and it's it's way cheaper than in stores to buy it from people. Okay. Uh, that, those will be like a hundred, where you get it for like twenty four plus a discount later. So you might as well go around to everyone and just buy as much as you can from them, uh, because you can use it on your journey. Some herbs to heal you. So that you can buy, like, so for example, you're buying the handkerchief and hip flask, which all they are is just sold again for more money. Okay. Why does he keep asking me if that's the one I want? Ah, uh, just because it's, it's supposed to be like, oh yeah, you just need to go off on your journey with the one, but uh, why would you do that when you can buy it from everyone? Yeah. I'm all set now. Why would I need Sleepweed? Tana, why do I need Sleepweed, exactly? Well, you know, when you've been cursed with capitalism, sometimes you have restless nights. So we need the Sleepweed to get into that deep sleep. But actually, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the Sleepweed into the wine and give it to the pirates. Oh. So that the pirates get drunk and then fall asleep, and then we can use it to, in their sleep, bash their heads open with rocks and steal their money. That's where the money is kept, inside the head. I mean, get back the things that are stolen. Thank you. There's, yes. There's no reason we can't do both. A merchant is a very efficient and savvy individual. You know, <laughs> murder is free. <laughs> In fact, it's it's profitable, really. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's subtracting from the surplus population, but still. But then, legally, you get all their stuff, so then you take their clothes and sell it. There you and go. And take their possessions and sell it. So, really, it's, it's, it's pro-capitalism. I think we're going to break the Guinness Book of World Records for saying capitalism or capitalistic by the end of this. Oh, I don't know. Because, uh, well, the reason I got really excited was she reminded me of, um, have you heard of the game Reseteer? Yes. Yeah, that's, that is, it, it reminded me of, of the character from that, which, uh, is just, yeah, pure capitalism simulator. It's so fun. Those are, like, my a favorite genre of game for me. Because you get to be scummy and be like, no, I'm not charging a discount. It's going to be full price and, <laughs> you know, see people. Because I couldn't do that in real life. If if, uh, if I worked at a store and someone said, please, can I get it for like $2 off? I'd be like, yeah, all right, sure. Uh, whatever. And that, that wouldn't go over well with no, management. No, no but in, in video games, you can be as rude as you want. That's well, been going for a little while now, and uh, these quick looks are meant to be 20 minutes long at minimum, so where would you say the prologue for uh, Tressa ends, mate? Well, we have a little dungeon here, nothing too long, really. Okay. Um, and then after that, we do have a boss fight, and then uh, there will be a bit of a cutscene after that, but we could stop it before the cutscene there. We'll do at least the boss fight. Okay. For getting in like a dungeon and some proper combat and one. Oh, we have random battles, not sure if one. Alright, so here we have a bird! So yes, every opponent has a weak point, and it tells you there, use the spear. So when you attack the weak point, their uh, number with the shield goes down, and when you break it, their next turn is gone. So after that, you can basically go out on the offensive. Now you yourself have things called boost points, which are those little dots that when you power yourself up with, you get more than one attack. Okay, interesting. What you should do, what you normally do is you break them and then you end up using all of your boost points to try and uh, deal as much damage as you can. Boost points are gone after battle though. They are a, a mid-battle thing only. Okay. Bit of a poor merchant if she can't talk down some items from her foes. Uh, she is... No, that's mostly for the thief. Uh, the, the thief is for stealing. What's the difference? Well, hey... Yeah, no, but she does have some special actions, which we will get to see in a little bit here. And, uh, the game... We're good. What to do? So these fish here, let's maybe try and use our other weapon on them, which you can use by pressing a left on the, the menu there. Alright, just wait for it to get back to my turn first. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. You can break both of them and then do some stuff, but I would maybe heal. Healing grape. There you go. Just eat a single grape. And it is a single grape, because literally you get an item called a bunch of healing grapes. Let's do this. So, uh, if you see above your HP bar, you do have uh, four pips there. 
So, uh, you'll have five on the next turn. Just press R, 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 and you will basically power up to Super Saiyan. And you can do now four strikes in a row. Wow, these guys have a lot of HP. They do. Maybe I should run. I think you're close to at least killing the one. Um, might be a good idea. Or not. This was a very short playthrough. Wow, are we serious here? Okay, yeah, use up your three. Okay. There we go. Oh my god. Yeah, those those fish were way scarier than anything I remembered. Um, yeah, let's heal up. You can also use the slippery nut to permanently increase your evasion if you want. That is a permanent buff <sighs> item. Don't talk to me about no slippery nut. I was conned into buying though. So you also do have, under the merchant skills, that's just the name of her, uh, her magic, if you will. So you can take a look at that and see what sort of magic she has. Okay. So breaking just paralyzes and whatnot, yeah, I guess. No, that, it completely shatters their defense stat. Okay. So as such, like, there'll be some enemies that, until you break, you can't damage them. Looks like a bit of an extra turn. And uh, it not only deletes, like, their upcoming turn, but the one after that. So, it's really useful on bosses, because then you can, uh, you know, stop them from doing stuff. Hmm. You're also getting JP, which are job points. Uh, those will let you power up your job. Okay. Because uh, you can later on change your jobs around, but for now, your job is a merchant. So, as such, you'll get merchant skills, which will let you, uh, we'll probably get one pretty soon. I think the first one costs 10 job points, but then everyone after that costs, like, 10 times more. Okay. You actually get to choose what you want to, I uh, get as your next thing. God, no, oh, boy, no. it's the fish. You, um, you know what? Okay, go to your merchant skills. Uh-huh. And use, um, trade wins on them. Okay. Let's give that a try. Nope, they are not weak to that. That is wind magic. Can I have a turn, please? So you can see at the top of the bar there, um, the order of turns for who who goes. I would definitely switch over to your uh, your bow at least. But uh, one thing you can do is you really got to start using your BP a bit more, your brave points. Um, so you have three right now. So I would use I would just. R R R and uh, kill the fish with it with it broken because uh, you'll do three big hits to them. Okay, I'm gonna use a healing grape first, yeah. Because you get one BP every turn, uh, it's good to use them up as much as you can. Because like now you have maxed out, so you can only use up to four. So there you go, much easier. I don't know why that one had a lot, but yeah, you can now- so you broke him, and now I would use both my BP up and, uh, and just kill him quickly. Cool, I got it. Plus, I love the feeling of hitting the- the BP and just hearing them, like, Dragon Ball power up. I'm learning, guys! I'm becoming better at RPGs! There you go, and you leveled up and got some more JP, which I think you should have enough to get your first- Thing. So if you open up your menu, uh, go down. Never mind, you don't even have that as an option yet. I'm jumping the gun. I don't need to heal because, as with every good RPG, you get a you get a boost in health and whatnot, or a full restore once you level up. That is the nicest thing. It One is. thing I will say about this game, uh, there's plenty of save points. Pretty much every single, uh, like dungeon screen has at least one save point. It's quite nice for that. So this bird is actually, a, it's a level 2 version of the previous bird enemy. Uh, the sprite is barely different, it just has a bit more for the bow and stuff, but you can definitely tell because it has two points of its shield instead of the one. So as such, you know, you can double up and use two hits with your spear in one single turn. Mm -hmm. Alright, I'm kind of liking this break system, it's nice. So this is quite similar to the system that was in Bravely Default, but there you actually uh, could... Uh, so it had the Brave system, which is the Bravely, but you would also have defaulting, which is basically defending, because what defending does is defending, and it's similar in this game, defending will make it so that you actually um, just get a free BP point. 
uh, while still defending. Okay. So you get basically two in a turn. So if you ever just need more BP, hey. defend. And he's just like, that's racist. <laughs> Only we can talk like this. All right. That's our word. You got any poison meat for me? Oh, I need to... Uh, Whistle needs wetting. I can't fucking talk today. I'm sorry. Don't sandbag me on those times of all times, Tanner. <laughs> I like how but she's just like, we're sorry that you stole from us. Here's something else. There you go. You forgot this. He doesn't even get a name, he's just a lackey. Yeah, no, that is his name. He was born to literally be a, a, just a, a lackey. Mm. Wait for it. <laughs> Absolutely no problem just taking it in and being like, Yeah, bottoms up, let's have it! Uh, what a bunch of schmucks. Well, <laughs> they call them pirates, not smiles. <laughs> Why the need for a chandelier in a cave? I, I've never even noticed that. Um, <laughs> did they have to route power through that? Wow, okay. <laughs> no, they just hang it up and like, light candles and whatnot, I suppose. Hmm, okay. I'm taking notice. I'm taking notice. Do you notice who the, uh, the, the, the captain is? Yep. Hmm. Sad face. Betrayed already. To say that this game follows some pretty uh, predictable paths for some of the stuff is its a bit of an understatement. Uh, it doesn't do many subversive things. Aside from a couple, there's a couple things that made me go, oh wow. Um, particularly with, uh, again, Primrose, the, the, the dancer, who, I lied, is not a prostitute, but has friends who are literally prostitutes in the game. And they do not shy away from being like, yep, that's what they do. Mm. Um... So there's some interesting stuff, which uh, goes for a tone that is quite PS1, if you ask me, which is a good thing. It feels a bit like Chrono Trigger, I have to say. Yeah, for sure. And look at these absolute idiots, just like, yeah, we're just going to drink this. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, enjoy. Cheers. Cheers. We love pirating so much, we made an occupation out of it. And then it's just like, you see Tressa just like, whoops, the, here's these sleepweeds still in my pocket. Guess I gave them the bottle of poison dust. Oh no. Alright, just save again. Rotate your motherfucking saves, lads and lasses. I have a friend who absolutely hates that, and when he sees me do that, he's like, why? And I'm like, you never know when you want to go back. Yeah. I've played so many games where I went, I, I've just, I've, I've ruined it. Can I, like, take him out while he's sleeping? <laughs> just slice his throat. Whoa! Ooh, lovely music here. Oh, the music in this game is awesome, and it should have won Music of the Year. But they decided to give it to Cowboy Game. <laughs> I don't know if we're not even, we're dead naming Red Dead Redemption 2 now. Not, I'm not naming it. It's Cowboy Game. It's Yeehaw, Wambi Cowboy, baby. Is it possible to not stun all these guys? Uh, no. But there are, I think, still random encounters in the cave. Yeah. Okay. Oh, There's shit. There's a couple that are awake. See, or no, he's still, oh, he's still asleep, right. So, obviously, hitting them wakes them up. Um, I would definitely try your bow, because you saw that the one thing did not end up causing a break. Well, process of elimination, mate. There you go. Uh, so you pretty much only have, at this point, three things you can do to possibly hurt them, which is either a spear, or bow, or a wind magic. So, as such, if... It, it, and they always give you the tools to stun every enemy in their first chapter, so... Alright, I got this. So yeah, you can power up, and then the first hit will break, and then the other two will do the big damage. Oh, I like the big damage, Tanner. And hey, we don't even need to heal anymore, because we leveled up. Uh, doing it at kind of a brisk pace as well, I like it. Yeah, so there is always, before a boss fight, a merchant there, in case you need any emergency needs, as well as a save point. Uh, let's see. I would buy more healing grapes for sure. 
Uh, you don't need an olive of life because if you die, you're dead. So there's no point to getting a, uh, a, a, a reviving item right now. No, and you know, I already have a couple, so. I have not yet encountered an opportunity to use it on an undead foe to see if it kills them instantly, but that is one of my favorite things in games, where it's like, you see a zombie, use a revive on him, and he dies instantly. That's what we call the Evray strategy. <laughs> Evray was from the video game Final Fantasy X, coming soon to the Nintendo Switch. Oh, I'm excited for all those Final Fantasies on the Switch. I'm thinking I'll pick up all of them. I'm, I'm ready to get into the franchise. Oh man, start with 7 and you'll see why people love it. Yeah, yeah, by all accounts it's a great game. And, uh-oh, looks like they've been, uh, they've been treating themselves to a bit of the antidote over time, so they are not as immune to it. That or we're just slow. Hmm. Yeah, I'm just going to take this. I'm going to be on my way. I'll be running now. Huh. Wow, this is awkward. <laughs> He's like, are you going to take it now? And it's like, no. All right, are we going to fight Mick and Mac? Is this what we're doing now? Yes, we are. Wow, is this the boss of the dungeon? Yep. Wow, you weren't kidding when you said it was sure. Let's see here. I'm gonna tell you. Pull up the guide to help you get it so that you know exactly what their weaknesses are right away. Okay. Uh, Mick is weak to spear and wind. Mac is weak to bow and wind. Okay. I'm totally gonna mix those two up in the heat of combo. Okay. Skinny, spear, fat, bow. Just remember that. Okay. They're, they're, they're battle sprites, you'll be able to tell. By the power of my coin, I will defeat you! <laughs> well, by the power of our cutlasses, we say nay! Why are we all talking like pirates now? This doesn't make a lick of sense. It's, it's spreading. It's actually an infection. So one thing that is neat, though, um, if you go to other people's chapters... Um, the bosses get totally, um, rebalanced for the further you get in the game. Oh. So if you fought these guys, uh, as, like, your fourth boss, they will have almost, uh, quadruple the HP and shields, but, uh, because it's the first one, they are quite low level. Okay. The whole game basically levels up with you. You got that right. Alright. Let's see if we can teach they some stuff. Oh my god, that was... That was not what I was expecting when I got into this battle. Yeah, so the boss sprites are uh, really big and they look like, again, like Final Fantasy stuff there. So, yeah, skinny you want to use the spear, fat you want to use the bow, but wind is super effective against both. Okay. And the thing about wind is you don't do multiple hits when you power up your wind, you just do one stronger hit. Okay. Oh, I see, it's filling in, like, the weaknesses and whatnot, so you don't have to, like, memorize them. That's really good. Yes, and that is really good there. Uh, the other two things that they're weak to, you don't even have access to at this point, so it's not even worth it, really. So one thing I would do is try to get them both to be broken at the same time, because then they, they can't do anything to you. Or, do it one at a time, and then that way you're kind of safe, uh, for, for, for a bit. Okay. There we go, both broken. Well, he's back now, but whatever. What to do? Yeah, so the nice thing about the breaking is that you still do damage to them, even if they're not broken, like, getting them up there. But it's once they are broken, that's when you can do the big damage. Alright, get a healing grape on, there you go. Which one do you think I should aim for first, Tanner? Um, the one with do? more HP is, uh, well, Mac has more HP, so I'd see about killing Mick first. Uh, which one is he again? Uh, he, well, if you click on them, it'll tell tell you, but, uh, he's the skinny one. So, go after Mick, did you say? Yep. Okay. Booyah! Alright, just keep going for him. You can do it, Tom. Just ignore the slicing and ignore the dicing. See, sadly, we don't have the ability to use our job action now, but what it is is it will literally be throw a set amount of money at the floor, and the amount of money you throw will determine what type of uh, 
NPC comes out and helps you. So you throw out a bit of money, an, uh, you know, a swordsman might, but if you throw out more, then you'll get a cleric. If you throw out more, you'll get like a, like, as you throw out more money, you get bigger and bigger dudes just coming out and, and uh, attacking for you. <laughs> That's great. So it's just like you throw out money and then they're just like, oh, I'm gonna go pick this up. Guess I'll fight for you. Man, this guy has a lot of health, but then again, that's RPG bosses for you. It says here he has, um... He's dead. It actually doesn't say his base HP. Well, there you go. Oh no, he is now angry time. He is in Avenge Brother mode. Yes, so they uh, also, a lot of them do have um, big, um, like, super attacks, which they really, um, they... Sh they sh show you ahead of time. It's right here. You scurvy lovers. So what I would do is I would defend... You got it. And so, yeah, there you go. So that would have killed you if you didn't. Um, I would heal also. Um, but the nice thing is, even if you defend, you're still building up your brave points, which make it so that, you know, for the next turn, you can do one more hit if you want. So oh. it all kind of balances out. I'm gonna enjoy this. And now we just keep wailing on him. You could also use, uh, if you wanted, your, your your wind magic, which, uh, it's... Again, it only deals one hit, but it would deal one big hit when they're broken. Yeah. I'm just gonna keep defending. Because you defended, it does bump up your turn, which means sometimes you'll have to defend twice, which means, hey, you get just an extra, uh, break point. Look at Yeah, it only does one hit, but it's one big hit, because he did 200-some. You got it. Thank God I brought a lot of grapes for me, just a whole bushel. I mean, this is the tutorial boss, really. My turn now. It is kind of cool that every boss uh, for the first route has to be both a potential tutorial boss and potential, like, real threatening boss. Yeah. By God is my witness, you have broken him. He is gone. Or will be, very shortly. And of course, the bigger one is more HP, because that's how it works in real life. If it didn't, I'd cry myself to sleep, because the rules of the world are just upside down. So yeah, next time you break him, I would say instead try and, uh, and use the, uh, the, the wind magic, because wind magic plus him being broken equals huge amounts of damage because it is completely, um, uh, like, no defense on it. Yeah. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. It's all good. I have a lot of grapes in my arsenal. It's like, why do you keep popping in those grapes in the middle of our fight? Goodbye. He's out there. There you go. You can now learn new skills. Okay. So yeah, you basically get a big menu saying like, okay, now choose what you want your next skill to be. And once you get every character's job skill, you get like the ultimate skill for that job, but it costs like tons. And then after that, you'll be able to change out their job if you want. Or you can make it so that you can like pick in bits and pieces of different ones. Okay, boss fight part two. No, thankfully, that's not the case. Uh. <laughs> what, you, you, you little plan to drug us? You, that didn't work, so now, now you're all scared and whatnot. They're just like, that wasn't fair. <laughs> Alright, Leon, you can come in any time. Yep, thank you. There he is, look at that cool spear. And then it's later on, it's like, what do you want from me as your one thing? It's like, I just want that cool spear. It's so cool. Shazam. <laughs> I love the sound work in this game. Oh no, it's really good. Uh, later on, though, you do get, uh, you know... Um, they start to 
cut the dialogue what? out a little bit. Um, <laughs> but, uh, no, definitely it's, it's, well, they have this, like, every part of it has been polished quite a bit. Serious. Uh, in the visuals, the sound. It's a good strong. one. Definitely one that the, I think they're, they're saying that they're considering what? continuing as more of a series because this one sold really, really well. That's good. I think putting out a uh, a free demo on the very very early Switch uh, definitely helped get people interested in it, because the demo here? actually lets you go through two entire um, first chapters. Wow! You can go through um, Primrose's chapter, and you can go through um, the Knight Cyrus's chapter. Uh -huh. um, they just gave you the the full chapters for them, uh, which is was a lot, uh, really. Uh, there was some changes, um, mostly just in, like, some enemy balance and stuff, but, uh, for the most part, no, it was a really good sort of cut of the game that got people to be like, hey, this is interesting, you know, for those who maybe haven't played many RPGs, so, that's good. Yeah. I know I have a, a friend who hated turn-based RPGs, and then he played this in Persona 5, and he's nice. like, have I missed this genre forever? Oh, so much content. I'm jealous of people like that, who discover everything after the fact. Oh, well, I just showed him JoJo, and he's freaking out to me. I'm gonna get a text, and he's like, Yo, yo, but then when Zapelli was, he was sacrificing himself, and the music played out oh, so good. And I'm like, boy, you don't have any idea? <laughs> I mean, you just spoiled a pivotal moment, but... It's okay. The JoJo love was within you. It just expelled itself in spoilery form. And JoJo spoilers are anti-spoilers, because they just make you want to watch it. Exactly. I must be going now, but before I do, here is your payment. It is uh, a small painting of a dog doing a backflip. It's really cool. Please hang it in your house. I I'll treasure it, I guess. <laughs> and you, you just, it's like, I'm looking closer and it says, uh, photo stock? Is this just stock art? I think it might be. So I don't trust you. <laughs> I just met you. Well, if you can kick pirates' asses, you're welcome aboard my ship. I mean, she just went ahead with a plan to drug a bunch of pirates, so this is a... Is that a picture of yourself? Uh, it, I don't think it is, okay. but that would be funny. <laughs> it would, yeah. Huh? It's like, I'll take your self-portrait. It's like, that's not for right. sale. That's a picture of me. That's a little weird. It's like, I like it. So you get to choose one thing to buy. Hmm. Except you don't. It's a story thing. You okay. don't actually get to choose. <laughs> as fun as that would be. It'd be fun if it was like a Dark Souls thing. So like choose your like starting treasure of the game. But it's not. Alright, I choose the boat. <laughs> it's, he's like, I didn't think this through, huh? <laughs> I, I pick the document in the back of the ship that says I have ownership over you, the person, and you are now my manslave for the rest of my life, toiling and helping me with capitalism. Why did I have that? <laughs> it's like, that's just my birth certificate. <laughs> <laughs> Same thing, really. Is this like his girlfriend or something? I don't know. I haven't beat Tressa's story. <laughs> okay. So one thing that uh, I'm just going to point out, because a lot of people don't know, is that all of the main characters, there's eight of them, when you put the first letters of their names together, they spell out Octopath. There you go. So Tressa is one of the T's. There's also a similar thing for Traveler that I'm not going to say, though. Okay. Also, that is a picture of Edward Elric. You're not wrong. <laughs> No, it's uh, Alucard's mom from Castlevania. Oh, uh, yeah. Killing our boy. <laughs> Season 3 when? Uh, confirmed, at least. Yep, confirmed, That's at least. That's the important thing. We got Mob Psycho, Season 2. We got One Punch Man, Season 2. Uh, Hilda, Season 2. 
uh, Gretzico season two. Whole lot of season twos in 2019. I'm just waiting for uh, Adi Shankar's Devil May Cry because that's going to be either amazing or horrible. But I'm betting on the the. I was really scared of Castlevania Netflix, so you know what? I'm excited to see. There you go. One of the world's most famous works of art, and trust is like it belongs in a museum. It belongs to me, and I will sell it. <laughs> By museum, I mean on the front of my store, with an incredible price tag under it. Uh, infinity dollars. <laughs> of course. Someone just comes in with a check and writes infinity on it. <laughs> <laughs> just, c c could I cash this? The and the bank's like, I mean, I guess. No problem, it's just the bank account gets changed to an infinity. That's it, you ruin capitalism. She is different from these pirates and boring merchants. She has the ability to break. Also to be able to see things for what they're worth, I guess? No. Yeah. She she's able to walk into the games uh game sp yeah. uh, stop not game spot game stop and see which amiibo well. is worth is worth the most money. Mm -hmm. So say a gold Mega Man amiibo. Why is the most expensive amiibo right now? Do you want do you want to know what the rarest amiibos are? Go for it. Uh they are the gold um Rathalos no, the gold Mega Man amiibo. There's three, uh, gold Mega Man 11 amiibo. There's three of them in existence, giving them to contest winners. Uh, there's the gold and silver Monster Hunter amiibo, which there are 11 of existence, uh, given to contest winners, and then there's all the prototypes. After that, probably, probably Mega Yarn Yoshi at this point. Yeah, the absolute unit. It's coming back to me now. Yeah, remember when they just made an amiibo that is just a giant plush doll? <laughs> what next? Cereal? What will they do next, gamers? <laughs> Write in and tell us, because we're out of ideas. So sure I actually went, that. when I went to the <laughs> States, I got that amiibo cereal, and it's uh, it was actually really good. I was surprised. I'm not a cereal person, but that is one of the best cereals I've had. I mean, you do take things very lackadaisically. I didn't think you were very cereal when you signed on to do these. Woohoo! Hey, hey! Hey! Comedy! Thank you! For free? That's not capitalism at all! That's... What's the opposite of capitalism? Oh, communism! Communism? No, if it was communism, then he'd break the picture into two and give one half to each of us. Perhaps the day will come when you and I meet as rivals. But I won't be beat. I swear it on my... I'll throw the fucking ship at you, you little harlots! Yeah, you see this spear? Yeah! It, uh, let's say that we'll have a friendly merchant battle, but instead of money, we'll just stab each other a lot. Yikes. I saw it with my own two eyes. He just disappeared into the ether. His ship is not moving at all. It's, it's far away, so it, it's like a, like a plane. Actually, wait, no, planes look like they're moving. Never mind, my analogy broke. Hmm. So yes, we got this book that will lead us on a journey. And you open it, it's like, No, this is the screenplay for that Harry Potter thing! The eighth one! The bad one! <laughs> Did I just get money for something? Yeah, so that's what I said, you'll just randomly find money with her. <laughs> oh, bless. Alright, I'm gonna save her, and uh, I think that will do it for this, because... Yes, because uh, uh, aside from us going home and reading the book, that is the end of her first chapter. There we go, guys. If you want to see more of us playing Octopath Traveler, might be good for a stream, might be good for a, a, a cozy playthrough and whatnot, but uh, I enjoyed this. It's not the most action-packed game of all time, but that's not what it was marketed as. That's not what I came in here expecting. It's just very nice and calm and classic RPG fare. Uh, I'm kind of interested to see how the other characters start their games, so I um, might play this in my uh, actual downtime and whatnot. Here's everyone who's currently pledged. If you want your own quick look, you can pledge to our Patreon to not only support us, to help us get games and, you know, equipment to, uh, you know, entertain you all with, you can have a game of your choice quick looked and blah blah blah, I'm rambling now. Uh, checks, info, Patreon, page, thing. Ah. Uh, I'm good at commentary. We'll see you next time for another Hellfire Goals Patreon quick look. Bye-bye. Ciao.